Greetings from Group Research. We're here today to talk about our global macro risk dashboard. Macro risks are now everywhere and they're affecting markets, economies, various asset classes that we look at, and they are coming largely from various geopolitical developments. When you see the news on a day-to-day -day basis, you see news about Brexit, Iran, trade war, tech war, overall relationship between the US and China. Our job is to look at all that information, how that's manifesting in various asset classes and what it means for the economic and markets outlook. And hence, we are now going to show you a series of slides on the fixed income market, currency market, equities and credit, and how the macro risks are transmitting through these markets. In terms of global data flow, China, after showing some pickup in activity in Jan March, has begun to slide. Negative data surprises are now the common theme between China, US and Europe. The U.S. recession probability has risen sharply. Markets are estimating about 30% chance of the U.S. tipping into a recession between now and the middle of next year. We think these probabilities are a bit exaggerated, but we do recognize the risk that is coming from lower than expected inflation and the various collateral damage to consumption and investment sentiment stemming from the trade war. In China, we see growth momentum weakening sharply after a brief pickup in January, March. Short of significant policy support, China's downward momentum will not be stopped anytime soon in our view. Uh, we see also China's weakening demand manifesting into the global commodity market. We see Baltic Dry Freight Index, which is normally led by China's PMI, weakening in recent months. It turned around on the back of China's January-March data, but we think the leading property of China's PMI is suggesting further weakness on Baltic freight going forward. We have also seen some pickup in commodity market volatility around tensions revolving with Iran, but given how weak demand from China is, we don't see this going on an elevated level anytime soon. In the case of interest rates, the market was looking at series of rate hikes by the US in 2019, 2020, a year ago. Now it expects rate cuts. So expectations have reversed in a sharp manner in the last five to six months. Right now, we're looking at a couple of rate cuts in 2019 and perhaps even rate cuts in 2020. The flip side of weak expectations of inflation and interest rates is the fact that the US dollar has lost a little bit of esteem in recent weeks. And the other hand, flight to safety concerns have led to gold prices picking up after a long, long time. On the Chinese currency space, we see that Chinese RMB volatility picked up sharply when trade wars escalated. TBUS's intervention has reduced volatility somewhat in recent weeks, but we don't think that that is going to last for a very long time, especially if trade war tensions do not ease anytime soon. On the equity front, we see a case shiller index showing significantly elevated valuation in the US market. One can argue low interest rates mean higher premium for equity prices and therefore some of these valuation metrics could be justified. But it is worth noting that these levels are higher than anything that we have seen in recent decades going all the way back to the dot-com boom years. The credit market is showing some degree of elevated concern. Uh, spreads have widened both on in the investment grade and on high yield space. Uh, we do expect these spreads to remain high even if rate cuts were to manifest because there is a huge preponderance of debt in the markets and the demand for that is somewhat suspect. Uh, similarly, on the emerging market hard currency front, we have seen spreads widen and for companies from Asia or elsewhere in the world who are tapping the market this year, it will be costlier, substantially costlier in our view, than it was a year ago to access funding. Putting this all together in a series of color-coded speedometers, we present to you our overall dashboard scores. This shows global growth momentum at a middle point, not too hot, not too cold, with the risk that it worsens going forward. We see contrasting outlook being reflected by the equity and the fixed income markets. Equity markets are somewhat more sanguine than the fixed income markets. The latter is certainly expecting recession-like phenomenon going forward. The FX and the rate, uh, credit markets are somewhere in between. Volatility and spreads have picked up, but not exceptionally high. Uh, we do expect if trade war related developments were to exacerbate, we will see funding conditions difficulties and more FX volatility in the remainder of 2019. We leave you with the bottom right corner chart, which in our view is the most important one. Global debt metrics are at an elevated level, particularly in the corporate debt and public sector debt levels. Combine that with high asset valuations, you do have a rather potent mix for dislocation. Watch out for that. That's it from us. Do follow our publications on our website 
and follow us on our Twitter handle, and you can watch these videos on our YouTube channel.